Lovely so what do you think of the wine? You know, this is not my favorite. I'm actually a red wine drinker, and, and from my understanding, now tonight we're not going to get any red wine tonight. But I don't know if that's true or not. What did you hear about that? I, I, I hope we are, because it's my favorite. Acquiring the taste of salt. <laughs> and what type of food do you have in it? Was it with the honey? Oh, uh, any, anything. Um, I prefer cherries. This year I'm experimenting with apple cider. Uh, that's that's cider, not me. So we we got like was it four trees worth of apples? Yep. Yeah, we pressed four trees worth of apples this year and then turned into 35 gallons of hard cider. That's me. Now that I've got my hair changed, I'm going to do like four different, five different shoots so that I can, and I'm hoping in two weeks I can go to my agents with like all new everything. Hi, Chelsea. I'm Kevin, Wes and Jackie's son. Oh, my God. You've really grown up. I didn't even recognize you. You're certainly welcome to join us. How did you know I was having a party? Your Facebook page. It looked like you were inviting a lot of interesting guests, so I decided to take a chance and stop by. I hope I'm not being too bold. Oh, of course not. I am happy that you're here. Say, listen, I am so sorry about what happened to your parents. How have you been doing? I'm doing okay. I moved back to the old place now, so you'll be seeing more of me. Well, welcome back. Let me introduce you to the rest of the guests. Hey, everybody. I'd like to introduce you to a new guest who's decided to join us tonight. This is Kevin. He's the son of some friends of ours who used to just live down the street. Kevin, this is Sean, Gypsy, Benjamin, Tracy, and Joe, <laughs> Kathleen, Rosemary, Pam, Brian, and my daughter, Kimberly. Hi. And it's Kim. Hi. Come on, let me introduce you to some other folks. Hey, everybody. I'd like to introduce you to a new guest who's joining us tonight. This is Kevin. He's the son of some friends of ours who used to live down the street. And this is um, Mary, David, Trish, Kyle, Kim, Todd, and our resident wine expert, Father Paul. Feel free to have something to eat if you're hungry. All of the wines that we have tonight are on this table over here. If you should have any questions about any of them, you can ask me or Father Paul. Thank you very much. This all looks wonderful. So I'm going to let you get some wine. I'll check back with you in a bit. It's really good seeing you again. You as well. A complex wine like this bursts forth with many interconnected dimensions that create a depth to the flavor. Simple wines are like a single note. One flavor, no overtones. So what do you think is the best Chardonnay? Well, that's a difficult question to answer because it depends on the year. Some California dries are outstanding one year, and a, a more traditional old world white might be better another year. What about a 68 Dremont Well, yes, if you could ever find one, and even if you could, I don't think you could afford it. Even then, you'd be crazy to drink it. Why is that? Because it's crazy to drink wines with that kind of value. Wines in that class sell for thousands of dollars per bottle. What if I told you that I had a case of 1968 Dermont de Chais sitting in my family wine cellar right now, and I'd be willing to share a bottle or two? 
Frankly, I would say that you are pulling my leg. How could you have a case of de Montaché? And, and even if you did, why would you give any away to us? Well, my father worked for Michelin in the 70s. He managed their first plant here in the U.S., so he spent a lot of time in France. During one of his trips, he picked up two cases of wine from the de Montaché vineyard, and it's been maturing in our family wine cellar ever since. Gosh, and you'd share a bottle of that? Sure. What better way to connect with some new friends and some old ones? Great. Let's go get it. All right, Kevin, let's go get a bottle of your wine. Let's see if it's everything you claim it to be. After you. Well, I thought the 67s were unstylish and flabby, but the 71s were quite soft and sensuous. Yes, they were soft, but I would say they were more graceful than sensuous. Well, this is my place. I'll be right back. You have a nice place. Thanks. Feel free to look around if you'd like. I just need to grab something. One of the switches in the cellar is bad, so we'll have to use this to get to the switch by the racks. Come with me. Most people don't realize this whole area is full of caves. A work crew discovered ours back in the 70s, when my father was building a bomb shelter to keep us all safe from Russian nukes. But it just became our family wine cellar. You'll have to watch your step on the way down. The humidity in the cave can make the steps a bit slippery. Are you okay, Father? See that, Father? The Kuduray Indians believe this to be the tears the earth sheds for the loss of children's innocence. <laughs> what do you think of that? Where's the wine? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's right this way. Remember me, Father. Remember you? From where? Oh, let's see. How can I jog your memory? Oh, I know. How about this? Wes and Jackie Seifert? 1992? A tragic car accident? Orphan son? Ring a bell? You're that, Kevin? I didn't even recognize you! Of course you didn't, you sick fuck! What the hell are you talking about? Let me ask you this. 
Do you like little boys? Is that why you joined your fucking zombie cult called the Catholic Church? So you can show your love to trusting little boys? Huh? For God's sake, Kevin, no! Then why the hell did you do that to me? I swear to Jesus, I don't know what you're talking about. I never did anything to you, ever. Yes, you did, Father. I remember it clearly as if it happened yesterday. Your hand pressing my head on the top of your desk as your sweaty and hairy body ripped me open is seared so vividly, so indelibly into my mind. That is the image I have to live with for the rest of my life. Listen very carefully to me, Kevin. I am terribly sorry about what happened to you, but I am not the one who did that. Look, when, when your parents died, I was brand new to your church. I, maybe it was the previous priest who did what you say. Listen, Kevin. If someone in the church harmed you, I need to know about it. Otherwise, I can't help you. This is no way to resolve it. I thought confessions were supposed to cleanse the soul, Father. Or is that just a line you tell everyone else? Confession? For what? I never did anything to you. Yes, you did. Look! I've had just about enough of this. If you think I've done you harm, then call the police and have me locked up. <laughs> so, I can just bear my shame to a courtroom full of strangers, just so you can walk free and officially be absolved of your sins? I don't think so. you down here, Father. The cave wall is too thick, and there's not an opening to the outside. Right now, you are at my mercy, just like I was at yours. So, like you told me, just relax, and it won't hurt a bit. Don't look so glum, Father. After all, you're going to a better place, right? I almost forgot. I promised you something, didn't I? Wait right here. Nineteen sixty-eight, De Montrachet. Find a Chardonnay in the world. You didn't think I was lying about having this, did you? I wouldn't want you to think ill of me. You know, I never really understood the whole big deal with wine. Granted, some wines do taste better than others, but so do beers. Some beers taste better than others, but I don't see anyone selling a bottle of beer for 
thousands of dollars. This will help you see. <clears throat> Here. You may need this. Probably going to get a little thirsty. I can still remember the smell of my grandfather's barn. My, my cousin and I used to build a small fort out of the hay up in the loft, and we would spend the afternoons up there playing. When I was in my fort, I felt like nothing bad could ever happen to me, but. One morning, my cousin slipped and fell out of the loft, and he landed on the engine of the tractor. I remember rushing to the edge of the loft and looking down. The exhaust pipe had gone into his back and right through his heart. His, his eyes locked onto mine as he laid there on the tractor, slowly dying. I dared not move, for suddenly that brief connection of our eyes was the only thing that he had left. And I just couldn't bring myself to take that away from him. That's a very sad story. The world is full of sad stories, Kevin. I hear them every day. Stories just like yours. Divorce, addiction, abuse. Life is a harsh teacher that grants us both wisdom and and scars as we age. All we can do is marvel at her beauty and breathe in her uh, aroma and taste the complexity of her flavors. Is there anything you would like to say, Father, before I place my last stone? I forgive you, Kevin. How's the wine? It's the best I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs>